Too many parents, me included, started homeschooling with either too much of the usual or traditional ways or too little of the shifting of perspective that should have been helpful. Now, without embracing the unconventional principles of these schooling, most parents experience the full gamut of overwhelm, doubt, and frustration. Now, the goal of Victoria's Homeschool is to encourage families and show that homeschooling can be simple and doable. Well, of course, it is not without challenges. In fact, many parents hesitate because they think they don't have enough time, especially when they're working, or they think they don't have the patience to teach, or they don't think they are qualified to teach. Although one might think these are valid reasons, all these concerns can be addressed. With guidance and a whole lot of faith, you can homeschool victoriously. Now, this presentation is divided into two parts. The first part is all about character and relationships, and the second part is all about academics and records. So, you might assume that the following character, attitude, social emotional well being, and knowledge are all for your kids. Well, yes, but Sometimes homeschooling is not for your kids, but for you. So we begin with the seven victorious habits of parents, which is an adaptation of Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. But number one, be proactive, focus on solutions. So being proactive means that you don't complain as much because it is not very productive. So a cute dog you know, turns nasty if I read, and even the most beautiful mom becomes unattractive as a constant complainer. So focus on what can be done. So if you have no textbooks, you know, you can research online. It's, it's just like cooking. If you are missing an ingredient, try to find a substitute or change your recipe altogether. So being proactive means you utilize what you have. So number two, begin with the end in mind or focus on goals. So one technique is to actually visualize your kids as grown-ups or adults. What do you want them to be? Do you want them to be respectful, kind, smart, good decision makers? Okay, what can you do to help realize this vision? So your end is actually your why. The house can be figured out. Now, number three, put first things first. And this is all about priorities. Now, According to Stephen Covey, the key is to schedule your priorities. Okay, so sometimes, you know, when we're homeschooling, one of our children gets sick and we feel guilty that we're not homeschooling at all or we feel inadequate. So don't be. It's perfectly okay. So, you know, if there's a family situation, just bookmark where you left off and then you can always go back to it. Think win-win. It means that you focus on benefits. So sometimes we forget the advantage of being with our children all the time. <laughs> and you know, when when I was teaching um, grammar to middle schoolers, so may, my daughter was maybe four years old at that time, so she would always sit beside me and I never, never really thought much of it. But then one day I heard her talking to her grandma and then she said, Lola, nouns are names of people places and things and they are used as subjects they go with birds <laughs> as in tweet tweet but isn't that amazing i never had to teach my daughter language arts in a structured manner when she was young and this you know principle goes to, you know with whatever you do your children are always observing and you have to trust that they are always learning okay number five talks about seeking first to understand and this is all about communication now peggy o'mara said the way we talk to our kids become their inner voice which means that if you're overly critical of your children all the time even when you're not around they tend to be unforgiving of themselves as well and this erodes confidence so try your best to to listen and find out why your child is not, say, paying attention to you or not following your instruction. Pay attention and really listen. There's a whole lot of worlds to learn and discover if we just connect well, especially with our children. Okay, number six is synergy. Okay, so 
embrace teamwork, open-mindedness, and creativity. So there's a reason why there are so many homeschooling groups and communities in the Philippines and all over the world. So we need all the help and support we can get. And let's not forget to share what we have as well. So this energy sharing is one of our favorite things in homeschooling because we learn as much from our parents' experience even as they learn from us. And lastly, sharpen the saw. Focus on you. Now, Anne Lamott said, almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. You have to carve out time for yourself and make it an imperative. Hindi lang pag may chance or pag may time. So whatever you do to to recharge and decongest, do it. So go to a spa, meditate, join your prayer group, or go out in an open space, do whatever you have to do. As they say, you have to take care of the mother goose. <laughs> now, these are things that can be very helpful to you, whether you have been homeschooling for a long time or whether you're homeschooling for the first time. Okay, the next part of our presentation is all about academics and records. It's all of these that you can see on the screen. So, we are partner schools. Uh, we have partner schools, Victoria's Children Learning Academy and Hillcrest School of Antipolo, under the leadership of Teacher Joby Anna Galliano and Dr. Marlu Bersamin Kondangan, respectively. Now, these two institutions have been operating as deputy accredited institutions for more than 35 years uh, together. So they take care of our enrollment records and our documentary requirements. So these two educational leaders are forward thinkers and they believe that infusing uh, homeschooling principles will always benefit uh, students. Victoria's Homeschool also provides the following. We have what you call the learning guide, which is a listing of quarterly topics and concepts that are flexible and you can change in sequence and you can change your pacing also according to the level of mastery of your children. We also provide study ebooks, our reference ebooks. Um, and uh, extensive reading materials. Okay, so extensive reading is when you read for pleasure, which is shown by researchers to benefit uh, students. There is an explanation of that in our homeschooling guide. With regard to curriculum, we don't really require our students to buy specific textbooks. Okay, you can choose to buy from any store. You can buy from us as well or you can buy pre-loved books, second-hand books, even with those writings, it's okay. They will still be very useful. You can choose to buy box curricula like PJU, AOP, Lifepack, um, Christian-based uh, textbooks, they're fine. Or you can also choose to buy this, uh, the Victoria Study Booklets, which would integrate the, the quizzes and the exams. It's really up to you. These are just tools. And whatever curriculum you choose, or you can you know mix them up, it's perfectly fine. You can also choose to tap online resources if you choose not to have a textbook of a particular subject. And uh, you can also buy learning apps. For example, math, we have uh, Kubit, Smile, BrainPop for different subjects and so on. And if you still feel you need additional help, you can always enlist tutors to help you teach your children. All of these are all fine and acceptable and uh, are available to you if you need them. Okay, 2.3 explains our students' involvement. So we have very beautiful students in our student council. Under the guidance of teacher Hazel and the leadership of Gabriel Martinez, um, these students spearhead our Victorious Tales, the official um, newsletter of Victorious Homeschool, as well as lead many of our vault-in classes. Okay, our vault-in classes are socialization opportunities where um, same age and grade level kids would dance together, paint together, art, you know, do art together, or um, you know, learn together. So we have been also providing academic implement here where we give writing workshops and uh, other kinds of learning activities. 
They do this once a month. I mean, no, once a week, every Monday. Sometimes we do it twice a week because we have learning webinars on the Friday and then they're both in class on the Monday. So what are, how do we communicate with our parents? Okay, so we have the group chat support for every um, grade level and we also have the Victorious Village which is our Facebook uh, page for enrolled families of Victorious Homeschool. This is where we um, post our important announcements and their schedule. And upon enrollment, okay, especially for this coming school year, our uh, families will be able to access the Google Classroom where they find almost everything in there, including the homeschooling guide, the, the learning guide, the, the learning competencies and toolkit, so reference ebooks and others that you know that can be useful as tools for, for your homeschooling. Uh, in the Google Classroom, you can also find the extensive reading ebooks plus the website where you can find the list for age appropriate and level appropriate books for pleasure. Okay. And um, the program of extensive reading is also explained in our homeschooling guide. 2.5 just shows you the different classes, learning webinars, and the events that we have been doing. and. Uh, there's more where this list came from, but we have the unboxing writing series. We have the How to Raise Victorious Kids webinar, grammar classes, the schooling webinar, very, very helpful. And uh, we have the comprehension strategies, which teaches thinking skills to your kids, not just critical thinking, but really thinking skills and organization of ideas. And we also, of course, have the writing workshops, uh, uh, not just in the vault in, but also in separate events. Okay, so what else? Grades. So as the parent teacher, you are the sole provider uh, of your children's grades. So we provide this fillable grading form in the Google Classroom as well. This is an editable Excel sheet where you can input scores and it automatically computes for you. So there is a video tutorial about this and at the same time, you have advisors to assist you when, if you need help. So what about quizzes and tests? All right, so you are also in charge of this. But there are so many websites where you can get free um, made um, uh, ready to use quizzes and tests like in the Depit Commons or the Depit website. But our advice is always to, you know, to utilize the built-in exercises in books and workbooks that you are using. And for the quarterly exam, you can summarize questions in these quizzes, try to find the highlight, and then uh, add an essay question or two, uh, or integrate an oral presentation component in your quarterly exam. Anyway, what the, the quarterly exam is really to just assess what you have learned in one quarter. Performance tasks can be different kinds of presentations from videos to, to portfolio or or projects. Do, are you required to submit anything? Not really. So we don't require portfolio reviews. We do not require any submissions of projects or the like. But we do encourage sharing of images and videos of your children's presentations to inspire others. For our high school, we request for a semesterly written narrative essay or a presentation as well. Now, why is it all on you? because you spend most of the time with your children and you know your children best. And you should know how to define grading. Okay, so in the words of Passy Salberg, um, the, the, the leading education system right now, accountability is something that is left when responsibility has been subtracted. You know, I had the privilege of having a meaningful conversation with Dr. Felina Young, the author of Strategy Simplified. So I asked her this, Dr. Young, what do, we, what do we do with these foreign graduate students who hire people to write theses for them? Well, isn't that cheating? Well, she said, of course it is. But no matter, it is their tragic loss. Had they worked on their own thesis, they wouldn't have missed on the valuable and beautiful process of true learning. So do you worry that parents will just hocus focus the grades of their children? Why would you? They're not your kids. <laughs> 
So just remember, the point of grading is to show and recognize progress of learning and to guide your future teaching. And that's all there is to it. Just some final words. Okay, so all of these things, you know, when, when, when parents homeschool for the first time, they're really mostly focused on academics. So all of these subjects, language, math, science, uh, um, Filipino, and all of these uh, subjects. And they're all important. Really, they're all important. But maybe, you know, in, in 10 years or so, there will be a shift in the universal language. Maybe we will all be required to learn Mandarin. Or in maybe 15 to 20 years down the line, coding would even be obsolete. But the thing is, we really don't know. But the following will never go obsolete. And so, teach your children how to keep faith. Help them to grow with spiritual lives. Teach them how to stay motivated and how to deal with change. We just experience it. Let, you know, let's prepare them for things like this. Let's teach them how to learn and discern. Keep information, discard information that are bad or they don't need. And lastly, let's teach them how to make good decisions. Now in the end, the reason why we're victorious is because we believe that consciously and intentionally teaching our children is the new way forward. 